Welcome to Kicking It Local, the podcast all about the football community in South Australia. I'm your host, Johnny Kekko, and today I am joined by South Adelaide Panthers NPL side's senior player, Alex Ryder. Thank you for joining me, Alex. Thanks for having me. It's uh, a pleasure to have you on here. Your The ride outs, everyone knows uh, there's heaps of them here at South Adelaide, and um, it's a pleasure to be talking to, to one of them today. I can't wait to see what your questions you're going to throw at me today. Is it, is it a bit to throw at you, um, especially I'm going to talk about you and your brothers. You... Obviously play with your, your brother, Jonathan, and uh, have played with your other brothers as well, but also getting coached by Anthony. Yeah, I mean, uh, me and my younger brother, uh, we've been playing, f- I think, five or six years now. Um, I actually had a year um, with my oldest brother, who's around 35 now. We had a year down here together, so it was three of us in the team. Um, so that was, a, that was a good experience. Um, I think mum and dad loved that. Um, and then, yeah, this year, obviously... Uh, getting coached my, uh, by my oldest brother so that's been another mm. challenging thing for me so we we'll want to talk about that later on we'll get back to the South Adelaide um, the senior years of South Adelaide and we'll get to talk about you and your brother because there's a lot of uh, uh, talk out there about um, favoritism and stuff with being coached by your, uh, your brother it's not a, a very common thing where you get coached by your brother it is common where fathers coach their sons um, so I want to get the insights of that a little bit later but first South Adelaide is where it started for you as a junior? Yeah, I think uh, under 10s, I started here. Um, I actually started like under nines, but they didn't have a competition then. So, um, yeah, under 10s. And then I think I went down to about under 14s or 15s here. Yeah. And then I uh, obviously went to Cumberland uh, after that. Well, South Adelaide's almost like a little bit of a family club, isn't it? Is, is that why what brought you guys to this club? Um, yeah, I think... Yeah, we knew a lot of people here, and again, um, yeah, you're right. It is a family club. If um, it, you, any problems you have in life or things like that, you can always lean on people here, and yeah. um, I think that's why a lot of people love it down here. Um, and we got a few boys, you know, that travel from Playford um, to come and play here, and mm. I think that's a big reason why they do that for for yourself. Your the family clubs uh, aspect of it is that with your brothers. Uh, and your family, they all part of football as as well. Because I know your three other brothers are, but there's one brother that's not, Robert. Yeah, correct. Um, what about your parents? Are they involved in football as well? Uh, yeah, massively. Um, they don't look. They they don't miss a game. Uh, I tell you a funny story. There was one time my dad was actually really sick in bed. Like we were worried about him. Um, turns out mum actually left him to come watch our game. <laughs> so. That's how I knew how much she loved it and, you know, she loves watching us, so. So she left him at home. Sick in bed, yeah. <laughs> Why she watched the game. <laughs> Did you win that game, at least? I think we won it, yeah, but I don't think Dad was too happy. Uh, he got left on his own, but he, he missed out, unfortunately. Oh, well, at least you won for him, though. But um, <laughs> your senior career now, you're now playing for a, a pretty um, a decent amount of time. You didn't get your start here at South Adelaide, though. You had to go to Cumberland United. What was the reason behind that move? Was there more opportunities there than what was presented here? Uh, I think, look, obviously it was a long time ago now, but I just think um, I knew a few a few players there and, um, yeah, I just wanted to try something different, I guess. Um, that's that's what made the move happen and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I was like, it was a very long time ago to actually know the reasons why I went, but yeah. What was it like playing for Cumberland? Because you won a championship during your time there. Yeah, I mean, it was it was hard. Um, again, it was I was a youngster, so I was training hard, doing what I can, and I still wasn't getting, the, you know, the starts that, look, I thought every youngster in their head thinks they deserve. Mm. So um, it was definitely challenging, but there was a good group of boys there and coaches, so it made it a lot easier. You've been at a few clubs now, haven't you? It's, it's oh, you, <laughs> you say it like that. I mean, uh, look. There's a lot. <laughs> there's, there's probably me and my younger brother have this discussion, you know, everyone goes on that the ride out was moved again. But I think it's only been about four or five clubs uh, top of my head that we've been at. And again, there's a, another podcast you could talk about why them reasons. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, now, about them, yeah? I, I think five or six, I think maybe. For, um, you, for yourself, I know there's at least six clubs you've been at. See, okay. So South Adelaide, the- <laughs> Cumberland United, Adelaide City, West Adelaide, White City and Seaford. Yeah, I mean, I'm 31. <laughs> so you look at it like that. It's not, it's <laughs> not, not many. It's not a bad achievement. <laughs> <laughs> what did you find about all the different clubs that you've been at? Did you enjoy 
each for different reasons or not enjoy some parts of them? Uh, some some clubs were a lot harder to perform with. Um, there's more pressure. Um, but it, there, was, there was a couple of clubs in mind that just very welcoming and just made me play my best mm. uh, football that I can, you, you know what I mean? So um, that, that was your, you know, LA Cities and um, West LA, that, that were the two clubs that, you know, you really had to turn your game yeah. up, otherwise you couldn't play. Well, Adelaide City and West Adelaide, you've had two successful runs and stints there at those two clubs. The first of it was Adelaide City where you um, were coached by Damien Murray, who now is an assistant for Adelaide United. What was that experience like? Because everyone that's coached, been coached by him, love him. And uh, he's one of those coaches, like Paul Pezos as well, that um, that's, people just follow him and, and love playing with him. How, what was your experience like under him? Um, unbelievable. I couldn't speak more highly of him. Uh, he, um, he actually picked me up from the – he watched my, a game at Cumberland. I was playing Croydon. And I think I, I played a good game where he saw something in me that – um, suited the way he played um, so then it sort of worked out you know we had that chat and and that's why the move made me go from Cumberland to LA City because I knew I was going to get the best coaching I can get and um, he believed in me and I think there's a lot of games he was starting me over other other big names so it was really um, surprising for me to the the belief he had in me um, to start me uh, them games. So. During that period, you won the Federation Cup um, against West Adelaide, the rivals. Yeah. We ended up being your form, uh, your next team that you moved to. But or you also, through that, you got to the uh, FFA Cup at the time, which was the first, uh, first edition of the FFA Cup, not knowing what the FFA was going to be like and how big it is now. What was it like for you guys and the playing squad to, to achieve something like that? I think we just had that belief where we were just taking – week by week and then opponent by opponent, you know. So it, it, it slowly got a bit bigger every game. We were like, wow, we're playing this team. Now it's getting even bigger. Mm. Um, and I just think we just had that team belief and we knew what we could do you know, against these bigger sides and it turned out very well in the end. Yeah, Western Sydney Wanderers was the first one you knocked out. Not anyone small. They were the current uh, Asian, uh, Asian Champions League um, winners as well. So you, you knocked off the Asian champions in the first round um, and that was the first ever cup set in the, in the history of the FFA Cup. Um, for yourself personally, on a personal note, I've spoken to Nicholas Borko about it. He was also in the squad with you on that occasion. Um, what was it like to, to play in that game um, and how does it compare to any of the other games you've ever played? Uh, it, was, it was just one of them. It was just mind-blowing. You know, you, you, you see the crowd building up and you know people are there to support you because we're from Adelaide, you know, and then um, to get out there and play, it was, it was just a tester really to see, okay, how much fitter and better they are than I am. You know, I'm, mm. I work full-time. I, I've got, you know, plus trying to juggle soccer too. So let's see what they can do over me. And look, the, the, the pace of the game was intense you know they you can see why they're in the a-league mm. um they've got that you know that fitness and the sharpness but again you know training every day you can see why they've got that but yeah it was a good tester for me and i it made me um really really see what i could do um and test my ability the you did get tested in that game and you managed to win one nil um i think it was thomas love that scored the the winner in that game i was there for the game it was an incredible atmosphere to, to be involved there at Martin Sports Complex. Yeah, it was. Un I mean, uh, you look at that run and he just carved through four plays like they weren't there. And uh, I think I was I was defending deep then. I was left back and I just seen him keep going. And <laughs> when it went in, I just seen everyone run near the dugout box and I just worked out how far I had to run to celebrate with him. Um, but yeah, it was... Um, it's one of them things you can just keep watching and when mm. it pops up, you just have to watch it all over again and, and it's just good to know that you're a part of that um, special moment. Yeah, you talk about the... Well, that's what we love about the um, FFA Cup and the Australia Cup as it's known now. The players, full-time players in the A-League playing against players like yourself who train only one, uh, twice, maybe three times a week for some clubs and you I'm up against these people and you've got full-time jobs as well on the side... For you at the time, I know you went through a period where you were trying to focus on football and that's when you were at Adelaide City. What job were you doing at that period of time? Um, I, I think I was doing, I was a, I was a baker I was a, on an apprenticeship. So it was um, early hours, 2 a.m. 
um, starts, so, 2 a.m. Start. 2 a.m. starts, Jeez. yeah. So it was one of them things I couldn't do both. Um, so that's why I sort of led towards the, the, the LA City and I stuck with that and gave that a good crack. So you were baking, was that Baker's Delight, was it? Yeah, Baker? correct. Yeah, yeah. What was it like baking <laughs> Baker's Delight? Do you have some of your favourite things to bake there? Because <laughs> I love the cheesy mites. Yeah. Uh, look, I was working with my, uh, my two older brothers at the time, so it was pretty laid back. It was good, but um, I'm more of a croissant. I had a, a few of them, which <laughs> is good now. I'm not a baker because I'm getting older. I've got to look after the old figure. Yeah, you would have eaten more than you made. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. It was also good when they're baked fresh. Um, but so with with the focusing on football, because it, it's not easy for a lot of people that want to focus to try and get a professional career. At that period, were you trying to, to reach for a, like a bit more of a full-time professional role in football? Uh, I guess I just wanted to um, really test myself. Going to LA City was, uh, was a big thing for me. So um, I just wanted to see if I could match it with your players. Like... I, I ha- I had all right in my team and stuff like that, and for me, he he's unreal. Um, I talked to many players, and what what he does on the field, at, he he makes you look better than what you are half the time. So I was competing and you know training with players like him in my team. So I really it, it was a big tester for me, and it was nerve wracking at the time. But I look back now, and I'm yeah, it was just a good experience to um to push myself out my comfort zone. Um, I think I could have stayed at Cumberland and. Kept doing okay and doing well, but I really wanted to see what I could do and see how far I could take it, I guess. What do you believe that experience that you you have taken, like the experience you've had there now with Adelaide City, what do you believe it's done to you, um, to your career now? Uh, I guess uh, just confidence. Um, I, I tell the players in my the young lads in my team now, I said, you just got to build on each each week. You know, it's not about having one good game. And then six bad games. Mm. It's just about getting consistent and and you know just getting your name out there and getting people talking about you. Get, that's that's what you want to do. Um, so yeah. The the next step after that, you went to at West Adelaide, the rivals, and you knocked them out in the Federation Cup. But the next year, you would go there and you won the grand final with them. What was that like to to move to another? His, um, a team that's got a lot of history in South Australia in West Adelaide. Was that just as good to, to be at that club as Adelaide City? Yeah, it was. Again, it was one of them, um, your team, you look on paper and it's, look, I, I, I still don't think many people could beat that team nowadays. Mm. Um, you know, again, Paul Pezos was a coach. Uh, you had Ricky De Silva, uh, all the big names. You could go through the whole team. Um, so, it, it, again, it was hard to you're not going to walk in that team every week. You've got to train, you've got to perform, you've got to lift it up, you know. So it was a good experience. Again, I went there purely. Um, one of my good mates, Briscoe, texts me, he's like, let's come to West Adelaide. And it, I thought, yeah, why not? You know, I played with him under 10s here when I was a junior and at Cumberland. Um, so it was, it was a good throwback to, I thought, let's go again and see what we can do. What was it like winning the grand final there at West Adelaide? Was it a good good experience? Yeah, again, I think we just all had that belief and we just knew the ability that we had on the, on the pitch. You know, if, if we all turn up, we're going to win this mm. final. And um, I just think we had that hunger that we weren't going to lose. And I think everyone's more looking forward to going that, the night out. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we were going to go to Mr. Kim's thanks to uh, Atco. So I think that's why everyone lifted even more. <laughs> So free night out on the town. It was. Yeah. It was. A, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Atco did look after us very well. He knew how to throw a party, and um, he treated us like rock stars. I think we walk into straight for the VIP lines, uh, thinking that we were, were on TV. So it was a good, uh, good experience. Well, um, how long did you party for? Was it a couple nights straight, or just one night? Uh, uh, look, I think it could have been long one long night. <laughs> one long night. There was, there's still photos that pop up on uh, Facebook these days. That you know, it's just. Uh, Makes you makes you laugh, and uh, you just remember the the good night it was. West Adelaide, and then now they're um, they just come back into the um, NPL for the first time in in a few years now. Um, this season in twenty twenty three, the they went through a tough period where they got relegated, um, and they were struggling to get back up. But they're finally up again. But wh- how do you think about that club, the history behind it? How good is it to have them back into the to the NPL and important? Look, they went. They went through a bad stage. Look, I think a lot of clubs go through bad stages, and um, I think I think now they're going through that building stage where, um, similar to us, where they 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 haven't got big names. They got 
players that want to be there and um and that's why you're sort of seeing results mm. um that they're getting because you watch their games it's the hard work they're putting in and you know off the ball stuff that's what's getting them the results it's not having these five six big names um strolling around and you can see that yeah it's a good improvement mm. what they're what they're trying to do there i love that they've um they don't have many names but it's doing some uh, having some great games as well and some surprising wins so far this season similar to you guys you're now back here in south adelaide um i want to talk about uh how this season started for you personally especially with your brother as a head coach but what brought you back to south adelaide was it the family side of things uh there was a there was a few things it was um uh, a coach uh andy got in our ears I, I knew he he had a good thing for us um and uh, a, like a president took over, Mark So he he had a lot of time for me and my brother, um, so it, it, it sort of worked out that sense. And we thought, um, let's give it another go, and yeah, haven't looked back since, I guess. Well, we're you're now here back in South Adelaide, and that's where we're recording today, and in Sullivan Beach uh, Sports Complex. It's a great uh, great location, and it's a beautiful warm day today as well for it. Yeah, look, you can't complain. You get to spend time with me and you get the sun's out outside. <laughs> it's great. I, I know it's not too great at night time, though. It gets freezing down here, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't come here. It's like uh, uh, Stoke, you know, in England. You know, you come down here on a cold night, you won't get a result. <laughs> well, we've seen that with Adelaide City in round uh, round two. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've, unfortunately, again, I was on the sideline uh, being a cheerleader. But, yeah, it was a good night and good to be a part of. Now you're you're now in the in the squad. You talk about that. We talk about that fixture about Adelaide City. This season is a building season for the club. I spoke to your brother Anthony Ryder, who is the coach of this season. But we spoke about the what this season is, and I asked him a question in regards to who we should look out for, and he said anyone you don't know, which is a response I didn't get from any other coaches, and it's a great one because now that we're four games into the season, we're seeing players that. Um, we don't really know much of, but how do you enjoy playing with like players that uh, are p- trying to break through into the NPL in this the NPL squad? Um, I, unbelievable! I think that the best thing that, to look for in a in a good winning team and to have that enjoyment is the boys getting along. I've been in some teams where boys don't talk. There's four or five different groups. There's mm. people just not not getting along and. It shows on the weekends. I mean, I think now there's that belief that you could hang out with anyone in our in our in our group and have a good time with. Um, I, I I feel like that's a big part of our success so far is just that um, hunger that everyone wants to back each other up in games. And um, again, as you said, we got a lot of people that don't uh, they don't know the names of. You know, so that's another winning thing for us. You know, we know what they can do, and we were actually watching their games last year, um, there's two of them that come from uh, two legs lower and, and now they're just s- slowly getting their name out there and we knew uh, watching them what they could do for us. Coming into a squad that your brother's now, he was assistant coach prior and he took over from Andrew Calderbank last season in 2022. He's now the head coach this season. What's it like adjusting to having your brother as a head coach? And you're also in your team with your other brother, Jonathan, as well. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, at the start, I didn't, I didn't think much of it. I didn't give him that respect. I just look. He 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 surprised me the last year or so, I guess, because like, he took over a bit. But now I see him as just a coach. Um, I think I actually spoke to Andy more about the team than I do with my brother. So um, I don't tend to get involved with you know who's playing, who's he selecting, what's the formation. Um, I just. It, it would get too much for me, so I've literally just worry about what I got to do and help the the youngsters out of my team. That's that's my role, and that's what I feel like it yeah. works well for. What do you do to try and get used to the fact that you got your brother there and you got to try and separate brother coach um, in the situation? I, I guess I just like any other coach, I'd see how what they know and how they approach yeah. the team, and if, if they know what they're on about, and obviously. He's played. He's played at a good level, but I I didn't see it as a coach yet because I didn't. He hasn't had me for long enough. But now he's um he's turned a corner and credit to him because he knows how to speak to players now. He knows how when someone's off, it's, someone's having a bad night or someone needs a night off. He's very versatile, and I feel like the level we play at, you've got to be like that. You can't yeah. just be like 
one to mention because everyone's got things going on out of soccer that's more important at times. There's comments uh, being put out there online and we see uh, people talk about it as well. We, we, see, we see similar comments in the A-League and other leagues where coaches like, say, Tony Popovich is an example. He goes to clubs, takes his, brother, his sons with him um, and they get an opportunity to play. Here you've got your brother... He's playing you and Jonathan. You both, uh, you're both great footballers, but there's also comments out there saying a bit of favouritism from your brother and you're only getting selected because of that reason. How do you take those comments, seeing them and listening to them? Uh, look, uh, me and my younger brother have a <laughs> bit of a laugh about it. The, the, the funny thing is I've played over 300 games without my brother being here. So um, that's, <laughs> that's what I know in my mind. I, I think uh, Andy Quarterbank, when he was here... I, I didn't come off once in three years. Um, so things like that, I know as a player, I know that I, what I bring. And yep. um, look, at, my brother hit the nail on the head when you interviewed him. If someone comes in, in my position right wing and they can do what I do for this team, look, I've got to work harder or I'll be on the bench. And I think he, he made that statement um, when they beat LA City and I didn't play. I unfortunately had to sit on the bench in a big game, which wasn't easy for me to to take in but I did and um, uh, that, that we had a good outcome out of that so you had a red card in round one against Adelaide United then that round there second round you were uh, doing that suspension that time but when you finally were eligible the next week you were on the bench did it mentally what was it like to starting on the bench um, and knowing that you had to work hard to, you know weren't going to get your place back into the squad yeah well a- again um, I I said to a few few boys, I haven't sat on the bench for six, seven years. Um, so it wasn't me being arrogant. I just literally didn't know um, what to do. Um, but, you know, I was down here uh, hours before, every hour before training, practicing free kicks, doing things that I needed to do. Um, because I knew if, if, if I come on, I can do something. Um, but again, it's not easy to... Um, to adapt to sitting on the bench when you want to be out there mm. helping your team win. But, look, it's turned out for the better, I guess. And he made a good good statement by sitting me on the bench. It doesn't matter who you are. If, if a team's winning, um, the, the team stays the way it is. I was in the commentary box that night for that game and you came back on and you made a point as well and scored from a free kick um, to get your t- team winning uh, that game against LA Olympic. So you, um, it was, you made your point. Have you... Going to find your place back in the squad this season a bit more easily, or <laughs> nah, <laughs> still got well, more look, proving to do to your brother? No, nah, I don't. I think I don't think it's that. It's just more of um, look, if 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 a team wins and that lineup plays well, it's it's unless you get an injury. He's had that. That's his firm believer. He tells us all the time, you know. So um, that's that's the way it is. And I had to suck it up. Look, yeah. I did sulk a bit, but that's because I want to be out there. Um, and. I said to him, as soon as I lose his passion where I don't care, I'll walk away from the game. But I had a very sour thing in my in my tongue about sitting on that bench. So, But uh, again, uh, a few weeks later, now I'm starting to see it was a fair thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Working with your brothers, and we know South, we spoke about earlier about South LA being a family club. Does having brothers like yourselves here, does that kind of make it even stronger about the family aspect of it? Because we know everyone has the kids playing here, the parents come and watch, most clubs do, but does it make it stronger being the the coach and some of the senior players are all brothers? Yeah, I mean, it's um, especially for me, I I go out there every week and I think when you get older and you realise you don't know how many games you got left or whatever, you you don't take it for Mm. granted. So for me to... I walk out and I see my brothers on the sideline coaching and I'm actually on a park with my brother, my younger brother. Um, unless you've got a brother and you, you're playing the same team, you don't, you'll never have that feeling. You will never understand that. So it's one of them where you do anything for him and that's why, you know, people target us too sometimes and that that's fine. But mm. we're, we're mature enough now to slowly deal with the the trouble that we get sometimes, I guess. Which, this is a tough question. You said no tough questions in this interview, but I'm going to put a tough one out there. Which brother is the better footballer? I, look, <laughs> I actually knew you were going to ask me this question because it, it gets fighting about all the time who's better, you and your brother. Uh, my answer is, is <laughs> I've done more than him. <laughs> but no, honestly, we two different, two different players. I'm, I'm a finesse player. 
um, pick things out. He's more of a, you know, strong forward, can finish, and he's very quick. Um, so who's better? I, it, it, it's a very hard question. <laughs> it's a very you're hard question. To, you're enough to answer but that But I one. am better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, um, but is, is it great having those moments where you got to play with your brothers in your career? Because you, you've now been coached by Anthony. You've played with your other brother, uh, Phil. Yeah. Um, and now you're playing with Jonathan. Um, is, it, is it something, a highlight for you, no matter how many championships you win, is it a highlight that you've been able to play and make moments with your brothers? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And it, it's not like we don't, we don't play one, one, once every five games. We play every week together. Mm. So it's, um, I know he, he likes to stay on that pitch too, and I like to stay on it. So we both have that strong passion that, look, you can see us getting fired up sometimes and the crowd getting at, at us. But, I mean, that's that's because we care about the game so much and we actually love winning. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a different side of us when we step on that pitch. But, again, it, it changes when, you off, when you're off it, that's for sure. Do you prefer when people get behind you and, like, give you that motivation from yelling at you at the side of the pitch? Yeah, I mean, it's – I guess I'm not – I don't need motivating. I just – I'm used to it now. I used to get a lot of, a lot of stick. Um, but, end of the day, it is what it is. If, if you can – the only way to keep someone quiet is to score and then it, it's back on them. So that's that was my motivation. But um, you're going to get that. Um, it's just you just don't take offence to it, I guess. Well, you do a good job of that and a uh, good job of scoring as well. It was alongside your brother. Um, you both have been on the score sheet. It gets confusing sometimes seeing the right out name on there. Which one is it? Who scored this week? Oh, yeah, it, <laughs> Honestly, JJ's having a good year so far, but um, you know he, he, he gets the goals. You know, you look at his um, mm. record over three or four years, it's, he, he's averaging a lot of goals himself. So he, he's definitely a goal machine. It's, um, it's great to see and it's great to see at this club and uh, the culture at it seems pretty very very good at the moment and a very family orientated club but before i let you go we're here at the club you gotta go get get ready for training but um i've got to do the kicking at questions can't end the the podcast without kicking at questions and i'm sure you've had a, a, a think about these ones if you've listened to an episode in the past but which footballer would you love to kick it with on the park anyone in the world oh there we go um oh there's there's, there's a lot i'll just go with i'll go with salah yeah, Salah. Any reason behind that Obviously choice? Obviously, I'm a Liverpool fan. I, the, the things he does in my position is unbelievable. So I, I, I guess I like to just ask him some questions and yeah. just see what he's about. Um, that'll be a good one. And now name two people, an international footballer and someone local as well, um, who you'd love to kick it with on a Saturday night and watch some football. So a few oh. drinks, watching football. Who would you love? This is a this is a weird one, but I'd I'd love to hang out with uh, Jamie Carragher. Okay, I feel like he would uh, have a bit of a bit of a laugh on a Saturday night. Yeah, um, that is a good one. And someone local, or in our league, or what could be anywhere, just locally, someone locally, or uh, locally. Me and you, let's go out. We're having a night out. <laughs> Me, you, and yeah. uh, Jamie Carragher. There we go. There we go. That, there's your answer. <laughs> what about your brothers? You would love to hang out with them. I see them enough. I see them enough. enough. <laughs> Oh, mate. Well, that's, um, it'll be a good night out then, I reckon. There we go. <laughs> we'll go to highway or something. Jamie Carragher will love it. Yep. <laughs> watch some, watch some football as well while we're there. But, um, no, it was a pleasure to chatting to you, mate, and uh, look forward to seeing what South LA can do this year. They're proving a lot of people wrong in their opinions at the beginning of the season, but it's exciting to see uh, what the club can do, especially yourself and your brothers. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. That was Alex Rideout from South LA. Make sure you subscribe to Kicking It Local wherever you get your podcasts so you can get a taste of the SA football community. Plus, follow at Kicking It Local SA on Instagram and Twitter so you don't miss any of the action. See you soon.